Good evening. I'll call the Monday, July 1st uh, Berlin Select Board meeting to order. With us tonight are, uh, to my far left, Justin Lawrence, to my left, Flo Smith, to my right, Jeremy Hansen. Angelina Capron is with us on, on the phone. With us also is Dana Hadley, Town Administrator, Diane Isabel, Treasurer, and I'm Brad Town. Um, additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? I have no changes. Public comment. Hearing none. Treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. Uh, the preliminary audit is going to take place on August 21st, so I'll be, you know, the day that I think I'll have two of the CPAs with me. Uh, and the field work will be on October 1st and 2nd. And um, I do believe for the preliminary, they are going to have to talk to one of the select board members and they can call you up. So whoever, I mean, I can ask again when we get closer to it to see which one of you, you know, they can call and they just ask General questions question. they have to ask. Okay. Yeah. Um, on the new truck loan, okay, I did get a rate of 2.05%, okay, which is a lot better than we have been quoted. Uh, it's to Community National Lake. Okay. And they were, they, this quote, is good for up to three months, 90 days, okay? So we'll have to close the deal before 90 days in order to hold that 2.05%. Okay, and they were saying with as a five-year loan and payments in arrears, the payments annually be 31869 based on the $150,000 we spoke of. So it, it could be something different if we end up uh, borrowing less or whatever. Yeah. Okay, but the most we'll borrow borrowing is 150000 I also want to make it known that Veeamer's rates have changed for the pension. Uh, this year, this past year, it was 5% the employee paid on their payroll, and the employer paid 5.625%. Uh, now, in, for FY20, beginning in the July 1st payroll, the employees will be paying 5.125%, and the employer will be at 5.75%. And that's all I've got. Otherwise, than that I have something on the agenda. And the nice thing about knowing these increases is you know what they're going to be in previous in next year. Yes, so when future we do years, the, they've planned them out three years in advance, which is the first time I've seen that. You like to take a look at that. What are the different groups? We're all in the Plan Group B. B. Uh, and, and it's, it's all a defined um, because that's municipality defined benefit group. We have one person in defined contribution, defined contribution. but still at Plan B. Mm -hmm. um, so plan B. And I don't know what the rate is for that one, but it's it's lower than this. It's lower than this. Yeah. And we've only got one person. Right. So they expect the rates to go up by 0.25% each year? Yeah. Something like that, yeah, yeah. So quarter of a percent. And there are certain, in some years, they don't go up at all. Hmm. We uh, have a little concern about, Diane had mentioned to me today that their actuaries weren't as accurate as they had thought in the pension fund. Um, people are living longer. How rude. Yeah. Um, so it, it kind of, you understand how that works, it's yeah. excuse, you know, what they have yeah. or reserves, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. so there we may could, find that. Yeah, there could be a point in time where we may have to make a big lump sum payment. Yeah. Uh, that hasn't happened yet, but the auditors calculate that information based on what the state gives us at the end of every fiscal year. So is that something we should tuck into our mind when we do budget? Yeah. This year? Yes. Just kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, have any, <clears throat> do you have any idea what you think would be the not, balloon? Not at this point. Not, and I'm hoping that I'll have a better idea you know, down the road. So if we, I mean, so if it's you know, five and an eighth this year and we set aside enough that would cover five and a half or something yeah. and just essentially just kind of follow it up, um, yeah. you know, three eighths of a, of a percent, whatever that ends up being, mm -hmm. and hope that, you know, if we, if we want to try to. I would guess the actuaries. Yeah. Maybe that's the. And, and I think we'll we would have some well time to do that because obviously this affects 
communities and we all budget the same way. Right. Mm -hmm. So. And they started this about three years ago. Yeah. So we're three years into this. What they're looking at. Um, and it, is it possible for us to to pay more than what they're saying there? I mean, that's not, not at okay. this point in time. No. No, I think that what they would do is send us a bill. Here's your bill. This is what you need to add for additionally. But there hasn't been any real talk about that happening. Just it it may. And okay. It, it probably will in the future, but I don't know how far in the future. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Diane. Um, everybody's seen the approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. <clears throat> Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 19G26 with checks 19333 through 19367 in the amount of $42,089.25. Also payroll warrant number 19-26 for payroll from June 9th, 2019 through June 22nd, 2019 in the amount of $44,000. One hundred eighty-six dollars and ninety-five cents. I second the motion. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed. Motion carries. Um, and <coughs> municipal tax rate. Yes. I I would like to begin by saying that um, we had a vote for budget vote for the school, and that did pass, and that was June twenty-fifth. So the <coughs> next step is that we have to wait 30 days in case somebody says well, we want to recount or whatever they, they want to you know not agree with it and that would be July 25th then on July 25th um, the Union District will send it to the state of Vermont and then the state of Vermont has up to 30 days to give us what the municipal uh, school rate would be so potentially I would not be able to issue tax bills until uh, like August 26th which means the first tax bill would be due in September, the end of September, September 26, mm -hmm. potentially. I'm hoping it doesn't take them that long to give us a rate, but regardless, we'll be going at least a month later than we normally do for tax bills, which would mean, so the first one potentially could be due September 26, but the next one will be November 15th and on and on. So it's gonna be a very short gap of time between the two payments. And, but, but because we have a decent amount of a general fund, there's no cash flow concerns. I'm not, that, that right, month. as long as we don't start doing big projects. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as far as the truck, when the truck comes in, I can get the money from the bank before I have to pay for the truck. So, sure. Yeah. yeah. So that will work out. Good. Cool. Yeah. I passed out <coughs> our worksheet on setting. This is the municipal rate only we're talking about. And just to go down, we have the budget that the town voted on, the 3,002,503. Articles, 74,000. The fire department, 267. So the total is 3,344,918. And the estimated budget revenues. Um, and as I say always, we're conservative on our estimate of revenues. So then we usually have more, but um, we do know that we're going to get the pilot payments of 185000 and that could be slightly more or slightly less. Right. I mean, that depends, and the current use is pretty stable. So taking those current revenues, um, that gives us the amount of taxes to be raised, which is two million eight seventy six sixty eight. The grand list is up a little bit this year, mainly due to personal property taxes. Five, um, the grand list is five hundred six million eight hundred fifty thousand seven hundred, which is divided by one hundred here. So that's what we have to set our rate on. Gives us a municipal rate of fifty six six four five six <coughs> six four. And you agreeing with me, Diane? Yeah. I hope. Yes. Yeah, uh, last year it was fifty five oh eight. So it's up about a penny and a half. Um, you'll notice that there is no. We did not have any carryover from previous years in the fund balance. We um, had a loss last year of 29,548. 29, we don't know what the loss will be for this year. And that just got, it essentially just got absorbed in the, in the, the buffer that we have in the bank. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and, and undesignated funds. 
Now we do have, that doesn't mean we don't have a fund balance. That's just the, we've always just taken the latest one. We do have a fund balance, um, which is over a million dollars. However, it's between restricted, committed, assigned, and non-spendable. It brings it down, we have 565,000. Based um, on less on FY18. On, on a year ago's figures. We're always a year in arrears. And I guess I would just caution the board if you're thinking of using any of that, it does create a false tax rate. Mm -hmm. um, because it will be great this year, but next year it's going to catch up. Right. Um, the um, state does recommend that you have at least. 5% of your operating budget, which we're, we have about 15% of our operating budget, which is, I think, essential if we have a disaster mm -hmm. that has to be addressed. And it also helps us in times like this when we're, we're not getting, our revenues are delayed and we're still having to pay bills. That's yeah, so certainly the case with, with other municipalities around here, they're taking out lines of credit and Short, short term loans to. Yeah, I bills. think many of them take out like um, anticipation and taxes notes and things like that. Mm -hmm. We're very fortunate we don't have to do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, so we can, we can safely set, set this rate because we have all the information that we need and then we'll just wait for the school, um, right. yeah. school rate to actually split up the bill. Yeah. Diane does and have a little have, information. Yeah, on that. there is an estimate. There was this put out by the WCUUSD. Uh, before we did the vote, and they're anticipating that the rate would be for a residential 1.717%. And last year it was 1.6683, so it would be higher. So, in looking all in all, uh, we had a local, we have a local agreement, and that was last year was 0 0.0015, which is pretty small. Uh, however, let, if I was to take the 0.5664, the 0 0.0015 for local, and the 1.717, which is the guest guesstimate, the total rate for residential be 2.2849, and right now the total is 2.2206. So, it, it will be more. 2.2. I'm sorry, what was it? It was 2.2206. That's what we're you know for FY19, okay. but FY20 potentially, I'm thinking, and and you know this is just an estimate, would be 2.2849 if we were to use these numbers that we have right now. And just for fun, for lack of a better way to do it, I'd like to know how much the operating budget is costing on the rate versus the fire department and the special article. So that's at the bottom. And uh, really doesn't help you much, but I think it's good to know. So it's like just south of a, what, 3% increase? Yes. Yeah. Overall. Overall. And we're, we're setting the rate tonight, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Um, if the board decides, obviously we can't bill. Um, mm -hmm. Normally we would be standing in the wings ready to push the button on the printer, but um, we can't do we that. Can, but it'd be yeah. nice to have this behind us so that when I can, I can just get the bills out immediately. So move to set the municipal rate for the town of Berlin for fiscal year 2020 to 0 0.5664. I second the motion as presented. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 And those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And, um, Bill May? Why not, Bill? Yeah, thank you. Working in town right away. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Diane. Um, Bill is Middlesex Land Maintenance, and he has a job at 235 Highland Avenue. And I guess I'll let you explain what you need to do with it. Okay, actually, I was hired to resurface this guy's uh, driveway, uh, um, Mark Wheeler. And his driveway is washed out and so forth. And I can go in and resurface it, but there's a problem with the drainage in front. Uh, because I guarantee my work, I need to repair that so it doesn't rewash out my new driveway. Uh, and what happened is the, uh, the ditch that runs along the front has filled up over years with sand. And at one point, it's almost level with his lawn. So if you get a heavy rain, 
the water flows over the top and it washes into his driveway. Uh, and the dirt is also up above the act of culvert that runs under his driveway. So it's a situation where you gotta kinda of look in a hole to see where the culvert goes. Uh, my intention is I would like to be able to just clean out that culvert, drop it down another 18, 20 inches or so, so that the water's back to the, the lower level of the pipe and doesn't flow over onto his lawn. And I'm gonna build up his lawn so if that ditch fills up again, it has to go a little higher to get into his driveway. Um, but I also, like I said, I can't see the culvert very well. It's a metal culvert and it, it is visible in the driveway. Now he was thinking that probably the frost lifted the pipe. And I'm thinking more that his driveway settled down over the pipe. But in the event that if I get down in there and I check out the pipe and I see it's either rotted out or caved in or anything, uh, at that point I would like to change the culvert as well. What size is the culvert that's in there now? A 15 inch. Yeah, I believe it's a metal. So they may have changed the diameters over the years. Now they're poly. So yeah. they run in 15 and 18s. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the only thing I wanted to mention, I think our ordinance says 18, 18. minimum. Any yeah. time you replace Oh, they have changed, they have moved up to 18? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. I did get prices on both because I wasn't sure yeah. you know, what your rulings were on that. But, you know, another thing I can do too, if I, if I find the culvert is just simply plugged, I can remove it and clean it yeah. and, re and replace it with the old culvert. I just got to make sure that the water is running down through yeah. where it's supposed to be going rather than dumping into his yard. So I move that we approve the permit for digging within the town right away for Mr. May, uh, provided that if the culvert gets replaced, it's uh, an 18 inch culvert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I second the motion as presented. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for your fine explanation. Thank you. I'll make sure you get the permit. Okay. Okay. And you said, Bill, you're not starting the job for. Pardon me? When did you say you were starting the job? Uh, wouldn't be any time this week. Probably maybe towards the middle of next week, somewhere in there. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Right, thank you. Yeah. Great Okay, municipal planning grant application data. Yes, this is the grant that um, Jacob Hammersmith talked about the other night regarding basically what we would use it for is to employ a consultant to draw up plans for the downtown center designation. It is due September 30th, and we found out today that we can't apply until sometime in August, so we're we're right on top of it, which is good because Jeremy's name is spelled wrong on the second page. But um, if the board is ready to vote that we should go ahead and apply for it, and then I would bring you a signature page at a subsequent meeting, it would be good. Move to apply for the municipal planning grant. My second motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And those opposed, motion carries. Okay, Josh, winter maintenance on Class 4 Road. Okay, so um, I was just curious, as like the last meeting I was here at, um, it, it all kind of just got flip flop from what we were talking about, which is like the winter maintenance, how I got you know, off on to widening the road and turning it to a class three and checking legalities and all this stuff. And um, we'd already had Tim here before, and um, you had mentioned how you were closing down Coos Road, which was a uh, class four that he's been plowing, and you were going to close that down. And he said that. Uh, no, that's a class three up oh, to the old town. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it Coos. still is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coos Road, anyways. Yes. Road yes. over by the airport. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but to, I, yeah. 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 That goes, it, it goes to nowhere. nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. 
But um, well, it did access uh, wood use land. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And um, it was an old town dump. It was a dump years ago. Yeah. And um, it, and it just kind of got all kind of sidetracked from the winter maintenance. And I just wanted to clarify that was all that I was really looking to do at that last meeting was to uh, try to get the town to take over the, just the winter maintenance plowing and sanding. And, and, I, the, and the reasons were is, you know, because people get done, I, I think I told you before that, you know, I have four-wheel drive vehicles, so I don't have to keep the thing sanded all the time. But if anybody else goes down in there, they seem to have trouble getting out. And I do have a sand barrel down there that I would take sand from the town sand pile to fill that barrel. Well, and it turns out that, you know, that I can only get two buckets of sand, which is beyond the point. I can get two buckets this week, two bucks next week, and just put them into the barrel. But um, I'm just getting tired of coming home and having people stuck or having to help people or be sitting there with friends over at my house and watching as somebody happily comes down and can't get out and we're kind of sitting there entertained by it. Um, and, and also, um, you know, I, I plow the road and, and um, you know, why do I have to plow out for, for my neighbors too? My, my neighbors don't plow the end. He has a snow blower that he snow blows his driveway with. Well, he doesn't go and clean out the end of Black Road with, when the town comes through with a snow plow. I take care of that. And, um, and, and I, don't, I don't see why I should be maintaining the road for uh, not, not just myself. And, and plus, I would still have my driveways. I have two driveways down there that I would still have to plow. It's not like I'm asking the town to come and plow me out. You know, they plow quite a few places out. There's just like a one-lane road that goes out to one house. And, and I talked to the road foreman, you know, and he, he gave me some of the name some of the names of these roads that are just like one house out there and then I've got like eight different names some have like two houses or three houses but you guys do plow the roads there's also um, right here right off of uh, shed road uh, David Malloy's which is an old town road that the town plows and you know not that I'm trying to get something that I shouldn't get I'm just getting to the age and I don't want my wife stuck down in there if I'm not around, because I sometimes go away in the wintertime, and my wife is there, and I don't want her to have trouble also. Um, you know, I have some other other notes written down here about, uh, you know, about something that, you know, from the last meeting. It was, um, you know, and after seeing Angela's email, I feel that the board felt that this was some, some kind of vengeance I was trying to take on my neighbors by having this road discussion which it absolutely has nothing to do with that and um, it's it's about having access to my house and making sure that people aren't going to be blocking my way to get to my house or out of my house and um, you, you know and other people follow their GPS and Angela even Angelina even stated in her email that she has been sent down that road by her GPS and, and it happens a number of times um, um, and I think that one of the problems were, and I don't know if this is a, one of the reasons why you kind of denied it last meeting, was, you know, uh, Mrs. Dow was saying that she didn't want to hear trucks going down her driveway at 4 o'clock in the morning with flashing lights and backup beepers. Well, Tim doesn't plow the roads at 4 o'clock in the morning, and he, and he had also said that, um, he said that it wouldn't be a problem at all for him to do that because he goes up and clears the intersection at the top of Crosstown Road anyways in the morning with a regular one-ton dump truck that they have. So he said it would be no problem to drive down and drive back out of Black Road. It would take him virtually minutes. And, um, you know, and I think that um, the cost was brought up by the town, if the town was going to incur any costs over this. And with them not doing the portion of Coos Road that they're not doing anymore, they could do Black Road without any additional cost to the town or time. Actually, it'd be less time because he's it's closer. And that's about it. Yeah. And I was hoping the town could, uh, see, you know, my way of least of at least plowing the Black Road portion of it. You know, there is a dead end sign at the end of that road, and that also 
drags people down that road. Wonder where this dead end road goes. And you know, and then you go down in there. Hmm. And in the summer it's not such a big deal because you can get right down, turn around and go wow. out. But in the winter time it is a big deal. The roads that are like Colby Road and Wheeler Road and the rest of them, are those class fours or class threes? No, that's the thing. Those are threes. Those are class three roads. Both Colby and Wheeler are class yeah. three? Yeah. yeah, most of them are. And, you know, and, you most know, of them I don't. Are class three. There are several roads that we wonder why we have them, but we do. Um, and so Wheeler Road, Colby Road, there's another one down in Riverton that I'm thinking of is Davis Road um, is Class 3. And I believe Dave Malloy's driveway is Shed Road from historical old road when the road, I don't know where the road went over here before the highway, but. Um, and was, is Malloy's Drive still Class 3? I am not 100% sure of that. According to the state, on the, on yeah. the map. his road wasn't even shown on the map. Yeah, according to the state, they're only crediting us with 0 0.13 of a mile for Shed Road. So it makes me believe that no, it's not. Um, the, the map up there shows the longer. I don't, I don't know why that is. shows the longer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, so, so I mean, I think it's something that, that uh, I couldn't ask him today when I thought of it because he was off, but. Um, I think it's probably something that we've inherited over a number of years that, that they've been doing right along. But I mean, my only question is, is it a, is it a class four or a class three or does the t town throw it up? Mm -hmm. I believe it's a class three, but I don't have the proof yet. Yeah, it doesn't show it on the map. It doesn't show it on the map. It doesn't show it on the map. It shows it going right yeah. out here where it yeah. turns around where his road goes down. So all the others that um, Josh mentions are class three roads. I'm not disagreeing with nope. that, but I'm saying nope. that. Nope. Absolutely. Three. I saw and, the big class three and, well. and Coos Road is um, a class three up to where the dump used to be. Yeah. But there's no residents. There are none, no. Well, that should definitely be. And so four. Tim had talked to you a little bit about it, but you haven't you haven't made a decision. We haven't brought that back for decision, but mm -hmm. at some point that might be something to bring up. We had that problem with someone driving down there and getting mired in the mud. Um, yeah, no chip wants that road done. The, um, the class four policy that was adopted in 2016 does state that on a class four road, um, no winter maintenance. There would be no winter maintenance. We do have two class four roads that we do limited summer maintenance. One is Rowell Hill Road in the, in the class four section. That's the steep part in the middle. Mm -hmm. And the other is Gun Club Road over off of Route 2. And those are, did you say class four roads, Dana? Um, those are the two that we do minimum maintenance, Angelina, are Gun Club Road and a section of Rowell Hill Road. Oh, and, and both of those are closed in the winter, though? They're both closed okay. in the winter months, yes. Okay. Well, the only way I can see taking doing winter maintenance, Josh, would be to take and upgrade that to Class 3. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what would that involve? I mean, that we, we started talking about that at the last meeting, and then the whole thing just kind of escalated into something that I really didn't want to... Oh, you'll have to look into it, Dana. Well, I did talk with the um, VTRANS, and the board does have the right to do that. They suggest that we have a couple public hearings mm -hmm. um, to have that done. Mm -hmm. um, the board can make a decision if they want to do it, or if it's a petition, then it would go, um, it would require so many signatures on a, on a 5% of the voters on a petition. Mm -hmm. um, to do that if the board, if this board did not decide to support it. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways to get it on. Um, and then it would go to the town and be voted on. See, and um, but so uh, changing it to a class three, I mean, I can investigate into that myself, but I don't want to burden the town any more than what needs to be done for doing that vote. If you could just come and sand and plow, it's no mm -hmm. problem. But if making it a class three, if that adds burden to the town, I don't. 
feel a need to, but if I, I need to make I think that the concern room. that I have and um, is is that if we start doing anything with a class four road, we have all these roads, as you know, that we wonder why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we yeah. need to start really reeling that in and and to be fair to everybody. I mm -hmm. mean, um, yeah, it's great if you have a one person road and your driveway and you get it plowed, that would be great. And it seems like, in, um, in but, after talking <laughs> with Tim, it seems like there's a number of them. But there's a number those of them. Well, that the I think. thing that is, is, are they class three or class four? They're mainly, must have been. These are threes now. They're threes now. Yeah. They got turned to yeah. threes at some point. I can't tell you how they became threes, but. Yeah, I don't it, know either. In much of it, I think, is historical stuff that has been for. Yeah. You know yeah. why, if these people were uh, contacted, if they left not lived on a class four road, why wasn't I contacted in 2016 when this class four road issue was coming up? I think it was a policy that we're working on updating the policy, mm -hmm. so we weren't really, you know, thinking that there was anything different really with that. It was really so like why did it change all these? Yeah, it was just kind of um, there was a class four road policy. We just beefed it up some, and mm -hmm. um, I could look back on the old policy, but it you certainly know, wasn't I, meant I for you to be let issue. out. Yeah. Living on a class four road yeah. up until the last couple of years. Right. I've had, a, in 18 years, I haven't had any trouble. Last couple of years have been booked for me. So. The, and and, and uh, the, the plowing and sanding is a big issue on that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an issue that concerns me very much so when I'm away and having my wife. Sure. Not be able to get in or, or out. All I was doing is just trying to oh, absolutely. help you understand. So, the, so there's two ways to if, if we want to, to get it up to, if you if you chose to if the idea was to move it into a class three status, um, the board could go through the public hearing process and get it put for the voters to vote on, or it could be by petition. What you mean so it would go to hearing and go to voters or it's just voted on by the board? You know, that's a very good I said voters, but I think I, I think I was I think I was talking board. Yeah. 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 But there'd be open sessions for public but you, comment. But I guess what I'm thinking, why I'm thinking that is there would be it's recommended that there be a public hearing. I'm not oh, sure if that's I a see. law that there's a public hearing, but mm -hmm. and I would agree, mm -hmm. and I think this board has always been very well, open. Well haven't we other. had this is the third hearing? Sitting here on this? Not on the same than, subject. Though. Okay. That's, uh, that's subject. what I think. That's what okay. I think. Yeah. Okay. So where do we go to next then? So do I get on the agenda for the next meeting to see if we or to have warned a public hearing on it? Well, and what what's in, what's entailed going from a class four to class three? Is there any minimum standards we have to put on the road before we upgrade it to a class three? That is up to the community. Um, according to their Bible, in the beginning. And if you excuse me for a minute, these other class three roads that go to these people's houses. They are no different than Black Road. You know, going out to Pete Kelly's house, his road off of uh, off of Vine Street, Wheeler Road, those other roads off of uh, off of Route 12. The only the only difference there, Josh, is is I'm not sure they may be grandfathered from the change of the state regs. If they are, then any new road coming in would have to be any up to a class three may have to be changed, it may be upgraded. I just don't want to have surprises down the mm -hmm. here. Because well, there, there was a, there was a minimum of like base layers, as I, as I recall. Well, that's a new road. That's with a new oh, road. It's a new road. Yeah. But you see, the town already owns this one. I just, got to, I just want to know that we don't get, going from a class four to a class three, if there's some minimum standard we have to meet before we can do it. But I, I swear we ran into this when we were talking about this with Raul Hill or something else before, where we were at least Hypothetically, talking about that, it would have to be. Um, it was I think that was that was uh, up on Vine Street, that road that went out that little community. When we took that over, that's yeah. right, that's right. So, but but there was something in, in the regs, as I as I recall, that it had to be there had to be some yeah, but some depth. That was a private road that we took over to a public road to check. Yeah. The uh, 
paragraph about, if you bear with me, I just wanted to read you the, the recommendation from the Department of Transportation, Agency of Transportation. Reclassification from class four to class three, it says upgrading is a common issue faced by the governing body as landowners often now locate homes in remote locations. There is no statutory requirement that such requests must be granted by the governing body. However, there may be an issue of constitutional equal protection if the municipality can be shown to be disparate. Um, in his treatment, I didn't say that right, in his treatment of similar highways. The governing body may grant the request but order that the petitioner bear the cost of the upgrade. Um, and the difference is with Berlin Heights, Berlin Heights was a private yeah. road and they needed to bring it up to a standard so that the town would accept it. This is a town road and do we have to bring it up to our standard and well, you know, if, if we do bring it up, if we do take it back as a class, bring it up to a class three, is there any requirement from the state on on um, the surface of or the condition of the road for them to take and give us money for a class three? Not that I'm aware of. I would certainly ask that question. I haven't asked that question in that context, but yeah. I mean, we're talking a tenth of a mile. It's about 500 feet. 500 feet, feet. almost so a tenth of a mile. Yeah. The answer for that is not, not magic book. <laughs> do you want to see the magic book? I do. It's secret. <laughs> um, I'd like to know. And so I can ask that question. Sure. I just don't want the town getting caught on the hook here. You know, I mean, I think it's a. Um, we would, if we got added to our class three list, we would get part of the grant from the state. I'm sure it would be minimal, but um, well, I mean, if we're giving. Josh, can I just ask you um, how much money are you spending on sand and salt for your um, your driveway each winter? Oh, I don't. I don't have. I don't have. I don't keep track of that. I don't have all my plowing bills and. And, and the salt and the sand salt mix that I've been using has been from the town, uh, the town pile. I would fill up a, I have a 55-gallon um, uh, uh, plastic barrel on the hill that I uh, try to keep, try to keep full. So it's a lot, a lot of time. A lot of time. The purpose for me asking that question is that we have a certain budget for salt and sand mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. And I just want to know how much that's going to increase or it, it should, increase. It should, Angelina, it shouldn't at all because you're giving up a road that's um, about the same distance. So it won't change anything. Well, you're already doing it with town and I, salt and sand, or town stuff. Right, and, it, and actually, uh, Justin had a good point that I'm already taking You're the You're using the material same. anyway. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hmm. A lot of, a lot a lot of, of practical great stuff. language in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're good at that. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to go good on this road, I think we need to look at the other candidates for um, going from class four to class three, or from private to, well, to the town other, roads and vice versa. As I understand, the other roads are, are already class three. This is the only, the only other two roads that are class four that we maintain are Raoul Hill and Gun Cub Road, just because they're so steep. Impossibly but there's, big, what impossibly but there's, Malloy's. But there's pri private roads, probably like Dave Malloy's, that are um, that have more residences, or, or in the case of Malloy's, may probably shouldn't be plowed where it's being plowed. If that if that yeah. map is right, mm -hmm. but like Borelli Farm Drive, there's three three residences there and a re reasonably active Airbnb. I mean, should that become a town road that's maintained? Well, the, I'm trying to think how to say this. Mm -hmm. Berlin Heights, that road when they did that development, that was in the develop the the uh, development contract that the town would take it over. I don't remember, I remember that. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, but our only concern was that as the road aged, 
whether or not it still had the material that was required to meet our, the state standard for class three. And apparently, they, I'm pretty sure they went up and had it bored. They probably did. That happened mm -hmm. before I came. I think you did yeah. it in about 13, yeah. 12 or 13. And it, yeah. it met the, wherever they board, just happened to meet the requirement. <laughs> I, could ask, I could ask Diane, because she would be very familiar with that. It's where she lives. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but this is, like I said, this is still a town road. And you said that, you said that the state would be fine with, is, is fine with class three. There's no minimum requirement. I, I, what I, from what I know right this moment, I don't see a minimum requirement. Obviously, I would ask some specific questions, i.e., how would we get on the class three list to be reimbursed a portion yeah. of, to get our road grant. Um, and again, to be sure that it doesn't have to be a certain standard for the state um, and not to be flip, but we have roads that are not up to certain standards, yeah. for lack of a better way to put it. But well, the road's probably in better shape than some of that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, for the most part, for the most part, those other roads that, I mean, they see a lot of travel, too. Sure. Yeah. Was that other road with the bed and breakfast you were discussing? Was that a private road now, mm -hmm. or is it? A, yeah, it's a development up path, up behind the uh, farm on the, in, in the airport. The well, dock, the well, dock. I was talking about Burley Farm off Muzzy Road. Oh, off Muzzy Road. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you were talking just talking about Dodge Farm. Oh, yeah. Dodge Farm. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, to me, like he added. You know, we're obviously going to go up there and reassess that property and increase his taxes because he's done substantial development to it. I mean, I don't know. It seems like we want to promote some development and help people with their infrastructure. Yeah, like the other roads, I don't know how the contracts work, but it's an interesting point. If they have an active bed and breakfast up there, you were saying. I think that's an interesting point as well. Um, but currently, this is already a town road, so it's a little bit different anyway. Yeah. Well, like I said, if you can look into it, Dana, and find out if there's, I mean, if there's no, there's no uh, worries about the upgrade to a class three, and make sure that this can go back onto um, the state books as far as reimbursement. Okay. Um, so that's one question I'm going to ask them about getting back onto the grant list yeah for the for basically the ask them if we can just swap for the <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. we're giving up who's road to pick up this one right you haven't voted on that though so in, in my mind you i don't know what your your thought yeah. is on that but you, well, let's put it i'm on not the, even let's put on, that on the agenda then yeah and the other question that i'm going to ask them is is there a standard yeah. that we right. need to maintain to yeah, or accept it needs to be up road. to to accept it as class three. Which is interesting because we just got the new road standards that I'm working on that have to be done by the 1st of August. So um, yeah. I know just who you talked to about that. Okay. Anything else, Josh? I think that's it. I guess I'll just um, check in with him and see what yep. he comes up with. On that, and if there's no, um, can I assume if there is no other than the um, public hearing, um, if there's no additional cost to the town, is this do you think gonna go through or? I don't see why not. I mean, mm -hmm. right. it, um, at least I would have no objections to it. So, so uh, there has to be a public hearing. Is that is that what you said? Dana? I don't know, Dana. I, I, I don't know if it's a legal requirement, but the, they did suggest that it's a public hearing, and I think it's a good idea. I do think a public yeah. hearing is a good idea. Is, is here. It's here. It's you having a public mm -hmm. hearing. Yeah. Uh, you never know. You, you may have two people come. You may have a hundred people come. I mean, but I suspect not. But it opens it up for the potential for everyone to have themselves out there for everybody that has a private road and to come to that meeting and say, well, I want my road. Well, well and that's, an, that's an issue. Private is different. Yeah. 
Okay. You know. You're you know I'm, I'm just saying I didn't want the. Yeah. Currently, you're yeah. on a town. The difference with yours is that we own it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So will that be? I think meeting? probably what I think probably what we should do. I should get answers for you for your next meeting, which is on the. 18th, I think. Yeah. Sure. Um, and if you vote to go forward and you want to have a public hearing, maybe in August, whatever date that is in August. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I certainly can have, now that I have specific questions, I'll just call her tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Josh. Mm -hmm. All right, thank, thank you, you Josh. Thank you, Josh. Have a nice night. You yep. too. Uh, let's see here. Approval of all board's minutes from... Right. I didn't have the, uh, the, the uh, minutes of the 20th yet, So, uh, but I do have the minutes of the all board's night. Um, and it was a nice, I thought it was a nice evening. I thought things went really well. Um, Except for the thunderstorm. We had, yeah, we had a thunderstorm. Unfortunately, John was able to run out and put the top up in his convertible, <laughs> um, which I had to stop the. <laughs> it added to the ambiance. It, it added yeah. to the, it added to it. Um, I thought the speaker did really well. And I realized with the speaker that it's very difficult, at least maybe, maybe I'm the only one, but it's a difficult concept to understand. And I've heard that same presentation a couple times, and every time I hear it, I get a little more out of it. Um, yeah, it was it was it was. It, I mean, that was the first time for me. For yeah, I think you know. I think it's. Incredible. I I was I was excited to have um, committees kind of here. What direction? You know, I wouldn't going mind. To, it's a big. It's a big. You know. We have to do that more than once. Uh, a quarter or something. I don't know. Like I feel like if we had like, my dad was on the select board. He was he was like liaison to the road crew. So I mean I know that's a lot of what mm -hmm. you do. But you would go he would go over and he talked to Gary Richardson all the time. He was friends with Gary anyway. Mm -hmm. But then he'd bring the stuff back to the board or him and Bill. And I, I almost feel like with the school board stuff that we had going on earlier this year and all that, it would have made sense if I, I don't know how we do. Well, that I think anymore. it's and you know Carla had representing the made a good suggestion, I thought, was to have the chairman come into the board periodically of each of each committee to kind of update you where they are and, you know, have some conversation back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, when you get to the school board, and especially with the new school board, it's the logistics, you know, it just now. gets to be Yeah, but difficult. I think it would be if we could schedule that somehow or try to give them, a, like, Every other month, like or every month, have somebody from a different board yeah. in, or ask that if they could. The hardest thing that I do is communication. I mean, it's the hardest thing, and, and so whatever suggestions you have, I'm. I think it would it you know, keep yeah. us on the same page, so yeah. they weren't relaying to you and you relaying to us, and right, all of that, right. you know. <clears throat> that was one of the ideas with the all boards evening, so that you could hear from the state, so you weren't hearing from me. Um, uh. Look Maybe something here. that, you know, it's kind of like when you have five people in a row and you, you whisper to someone, by the time it gets to the <laughs> end, it's different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll make the motion that we approve the minutes from the all board meeting. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Made the motion to approve the minutes for the all board meeting from June 26th. And I, ju I just wanted to note a couple of changes sure. in the third paragraph down that starts with he, just to put Jacob there as opposed to he. And then the second sentence in that same paragraph, have Jacob further reviewed and take out the word and. So instead of he and, oh. have Jacob further reviewed or just Jacob reviewed. I'll fix that. Mm -hmm. And with those changes, I second the motion. It seems so right to me. Well, so I'll amend my motion to the changes that flow me. And I second the motion. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And two abstentions. Two abstentions, that's right. So, kind of ministry's report, Dana. And I have um, 
First of all, I'd like to just advise you that we are closing the office on Friday as well. We're going to take Thursday and Friday off. Thank you very much. You didn't know you were doing that, but that was very nice of you. Uh, <laughs> and you You're and, welcome. Uh, that was very nice, Angeline. Thank you. Um, then um, Jacob mentioned the other night that we had just gotten the village center designations for two village centers. That was Berlin Corners, that's this neighborhood here, and the Riverton designation. And that was a very interesting process. We went over into the hearing and, and pled our case. Um, it's the same board that is going to hear um, when we go for the downtown um, center designation. Now, are you going, are you going for two uh, town centers, or are you going for a town center in Riverton and a downtown up here? Well, I'm, I may have misspoke, so let me just back up, because I, I have to be very careful with what I say. We are going for the new town center designation, and that's the project over at the mall. Here, what we have here is the village center designation which is not the same, not That's for the same, but it's more of a specified, yeah, for specified. Like historical preservation right. and some of the things yes. yeah. targeted yeah. in a little. Right, and there are quite a few advantages into getting that, and we were successful in, in getting that. So, um, and, and Tom did a lot of work on that too, so I want to kudos to Tom. Um, I also want to let you know that the police department for a long time, and I always think of Jeremy when I think of this, he said to me, Dana, why do we have two cell phone carriers? Why are we using Verizon and AT&T? And the beauty is we're going to be using one cell phone carrier. Um, and AT&T um, has a program for um, first responders, et cetera, that gives priority to them. And so it's a pretty good program and the cost is pretty attractive. So we are giving up the Verizon in the police department and going with AT&T's first net. Um, and as part of their build out of that, they're actually building more towers. You're probably familiar have, with this. Yeah. should have better right. coverage there, but yeah, that they, all the emergency management folks get preemption. Right. So, so they, they get fast lane. Are they building more towers or are they just putting more antennas? They're building more towers, they're uh, building how many days more? 13 more throughout the state. Throughout the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah, a bunch of their, bunch of federal money got thrown at them for public public safety stuff, and they're doing this all around the country. Uh, I was just thinking. I thought that the they got away from the tower business got away from the uh, public service board and was going back into the Act 250 really? review. Hmm. Well, they still probably have to find a way to do that too. Good luck. It's in the pipeline. In 15 years, you'll have this. Won't it be nice? Yeah. <laughs> on the, the, the cell tower on our land, that one there was permitted for six and six or eight antennas. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that they'll put a AT&T or somebody will put an antenna up on that. But that antenna, I mean, I think Verizon put it up, but they sold the antenna to um, ATC, American Tower Company. Mm -hmm. And that's been bought out by another company, but it's hard to keep track of who's whatever it is. Is that AT and T basically mm -hmm. got rid of the tower, so they don't have the overhead, and this other company right. does all the maintenance. So I just wanted you to be aware. That's really all we had going on is, um, that I have to tell you about. Okay, thank you, Dana. Round table, Justin. Yeah, it's back to the discussion on the getting boards together or whatever. What do you guys think would be a good approach to that? So I think you got people there. I mean, I almost got there if I didn't have you know kid issues, whatever, but I think you incentivize people going there with food, which is really effective, but will they actually show up? I mean, if we ask them to show up, I mean, given that they're volunteers and whatever, that's sometimes that's sometimes a struggle. I was thinking it would be nice if we did it again in terms of the food having potluck. You know, everyone mm -hmm. bringing a dish, you know, their favorite mm -hmm. dish. I think it would really add a lot to the community and, and the mm -hmm. sharing and mm -hmm. collaboration. Yeah, I agree. You gotta have something of value, too. 
So I think that I really wasn't aware that those people were going to be there, but that was huge value. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I don't know if there's updates or if there's any way we can use that to keep pulling people, you know, finding a common interest. Um, just I think get. that your um, the chair of the planning commission is very um, <coughs> interested in keeping connected with the board, yep. um, as well as the DRB. Um, and the chair of that is also very mm -hmm. um, much able to come and, <coughs> and share. And some of the other boards, I think that it would help if we could kind of keep them more connected because, frankly, I think that they might kind of go off on their own doing things and we don't follow them as well as we should or help them as well as we should. Because volunteers, I mean, the volunteers to me is the blood of this town. And I appreciate every volunteer that serves on a board. And it is a good point. Obviously, it's hard to make a lot of meetings. But, but I think it's, I think people would like it. I think I'd be interested, if I were chairman, to have someone, if they had the board, interested in talking to me about things mm -hmm. or had something. So what do you think? Are you thinking like you didn't fight them in? To um, our well, I'm thinking, me, I mean, I, I think the, the gathering of the in a neutral place was really nice from the standpoint that people got to chat with each other right. and meet each other. Now, we all know each other, but still you don't, you don't as much, you know. Right. You work with someone more than you see others. So I thought that was a really positive It thing. definitely allowed for an expansion. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think the networking was great. Yeah, and some of the some of the people they were new members too, and we had a couple new members, um, mm -hmm. and you certainly want to make sure you encourage them. Um, but I think that also it would be good to have, a, you know, in, in a formal select board meeting to have Carla come in, for example, mm -hmm. and say this is what we're doing with the planning board, or just so that you know. Okay. Um, and that board has been, I've been hesitant to do that. That board has just been out straight with the master plan and the zoning and, and everything. I just, they put in countless does it, hours. Does it make sense for us to go to any of their meetings just to observe and see what they're you, Well, of course, with? you always can. No, I know. Uh, I know if you go as a group, any... I need to post it, of course. Right. But, um, you know. There's you, nothing saying you couldn't go and come back and have a roundtable discussion sure. about what you. Yeah. Of course, you can go. Yeah. 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 I try to show up once in a while myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that, yeah, thank you. Well, I was just going to suggest um, um, on behalf of the board, if everyone agrees, that we offer up uh, congratulations to Tom Bigdowski and the efforts that he put into what you just described. Um, I think that's wonderful that we got that and he put in a lot of efforts. It would be nice to pass that forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank Jeremy? You. I'm good. Angelina? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that very well. Round table. Round okay. table. Yeah. Uh, um, so my concerns about East Road being used for traffic, um, we're having a lot of 18-wheelers go up and down the road. Um, and I'm not sure why they're not being redirected to... Miller Road extension. I think she's talking about the exit six closure. Yeah. The exit, exactly, the yeah. exit six closure. Isn't that, wouldn't they be overweight on that road? Um, yes. Unless they have a permit. Unless they have a permit. And are, are these... Which direction are they going, Angelina, if I might ask? Toward East Road or, I mean, toward um, Route 63 or the other way? Um, I've seen both. Not moves or um, is he home so all I can think of if they're going toward here is they've come up 63 and they can't get on the highway, so they cut up that way. Um, we had this discussion with the state, if you remember. Um, that we the, did. That's yeah, correct. Yeah. I mean, did, did the detour should be. I, I don't. I haven't seen the detour signs myself. Yeah, there are detour signs there, and in fact, I went to Barry City today, and I really yeah. noticed the difference mm -hmm. in the traffic. Uh, the, was, yeah, the the trucks coming up from uh, South Barry, 
that exit isn't closed. They should be able to get on the throughway either way. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think can they get both? Can they, yeah, they can get they can get south north and, and south? Yeah, because yeah. they're not they're not next to the work. Right. They're not interfering. It's just with the um, exit from the southbound side. Yeah, and I well, think I think they, it, the only thing they might do is, is stop traffic if they're going to do a blast. Right. Right. You know, we knew that we were going to have people that were familiar with our road system and were going to use roads, which is why the state gave us a grant of eleven thousand yeah. dollars to. It is uh, are they hauling sand now? Um, or um, gravel? No, um, they're they are eighteen wheeler trucks with tractor trailers with the boxes mm -hmm. on the on the back. I'm not, I don't I'm not a trucker, so I don't know the. Yeah, travel, I don't think but. they are, Brad. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I know Newton, <coughs> Newton he hauls with the tra tractor trailer dump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I do right. know that my neighbor had some eighteen uh, some dump trucks going. Uh, to his house, which is fine, but um, as far as what you can do about, I mean, if they have, if they don't have a wait permit, the police can ticket them. Yeah. Um, if they do, I don't think you can really do much. It's a public road, right? But those permits are issued by by Tim. Right? Yes, yes, and and obviously, I don't believe everyone has one. I mean, but right. I'm just right. I'm just being. So could we maybe send somebody over to their patrol or two over there a day just to make observations? I don't see why not. Yeah. yeah. Send, a send the police to over to yeah. check it out. Check on it. Okay. Sounds good to me. Anything else, Angelina? Nope. I'm all set. Okay. I'd just like to say thank you, Dana, for that uh, setting up the all boards meeting. Oh. Yes. Definitely. Uh, I'm good. Motion to move to adjourn. Oh, wait a minute. Any, uh, any, um, set you right up. Executive there. session? No. No. We have a motion on the floor. I second the motion to adjourn. All, Thank all you favor? all. Aye. 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 We're adjourned.